You're listening to The Digital Deep Dive, where we tackle the newest trends, strategies, and pain points shaping growth across the digital landscape. From Amazon and D2C to international expansion, join our host and e-commerce leaders across multiple industries for in-depth discussions on how to maximize your brands in the digital arena. Now, here's your host, Aaron Conant. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Digital Deep Dive Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Kona, and today we're going to do a deep dive into affiliates, uh, affiliate marketing as a whole. Um, it's been a huge topic. As you know, I try to talk to 20 to 30 brands a week, and if I look back six months ago, uh, six to nine months ago, randomly coming up. And at this point in time, um, with this huge focus on profitability and then customer acquisition costs going through the roof, uh, CPMs going through the roof. Uh, and then this, the switch from influencers where I'm going to pay you up front, uh, to, um, to say something and hopefully I get something on the back end, as opposed to the affiliate side where it's a pay for performance. And so there's been a huge interest. And so we have a longtime friend, um, David Katz here, uh, of the network. I mean, we go back, I don't know if it's five, six years, almost the beginning, uh, maybe seven years even to where we kick this off. Um, and uh, he's at Archer Affiliates. And, uh, you know, well, I'll just kick it over to you. You want to do a brief intro on yourself and then what you're, what you're building over there at Archer? That'd be awesome. For sure. Thanks for having me on, Aaron. Super excited to, uh, to get to chat all things affiliate today. So the background of myself is uh, I'm a, uh, come from the e-com space, always been in the e-com space, been selling on Amazon since high school um, and kind of recognized about two and a half years ago that there was a big disconnect in the affiliate space between affiliates. So affiliates for to kind of just lay the ground is anyone who promotes products on a commission basis. It could be influencers, media publishers, product comparison sites, review sites, deal sites, coupon sites, Facebook groups, there's a whole slew of them. And, and these people are consistently promoting products on a commission basis. Um, and we recognized a big disconnect between that group of people and uh, Amazon sellers. Uh, a lot of affiliates were promoting Amazon products, sending traffic to Amazon products. Um, Amazon's obviously the largest retailer in the country and they're massive and they, you know, co traffic converts. Everybody wants to buy products on Amazon. Uh, and we recognize the big disconnect between those people sending traffic to Amazon as well as and Amazon sellers. Um, traditionally, affiliates were getting paid directly from Amazon. Amazon would fund uh, some commissions on any generated sales that publishers or influencers would drive to Amazon. Um, but that payout was coming directly from Amazon. It wasn't coming from the Amazon sellers. And sellers like myself, really, number one, had no way of identifying who was driving traffic to my listings and to my products. And most importantly, you know, using that data to, to grow these partnerships. So uh, if I had a product that was going on promotion for a week or two, I was never able to communicate that to potential strategic coupon and deal sites who were promoting my product at random times or uh, if my product was running low in stock and and a, ma a mass media publisher would be featuring my product in an article, they had no way of knowing that my product was running out of stock. They would be sending traffic to a dead product listing. There was really these two communities of people who were technically should be working together were completely siloed away, totally working separately. Um, and a, I think it's now two, two and a half years ago, we launched Archer Affiliates with the goal in mind of connecting both Amazon sellers uh, with publishers. Um, and really generating more revenue for everyone across the board. Publishers are able, the backbone of, of what we've done is enable sellers to independently fund affiliate commissions. So publishers can now not only earn directly a small commission directly from Amazon, but now earn commissions from sellers who are, you know, want some skin in the game, want to make sure publishers are promoting their products and not other products from Amazon. Um, sellers can unlock a whole new marketing channel, a whole new sales channel um, by independently offering these commissions to publishers. Um, and kind of everyone's just uh, just making more money, which is awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, have you seen a huge uptick? I mean, th this whole thing, it's it's the pay for performance model. Yeah. Right? Like this is, I just, I, I can't, I can't believe how many more conversations I'm having on it now than I had just a few months ago. And are you seeing the same thing? And then is there, how should people think about the affiliate programs as a whole? Yeah, well, I think there's there, there's a trend across ecom which uh, has kind of everything has kind of shifted to to one word, which is profitability. Um, you know, this surprisingly, in hindsight, looking back, it's it's like shocking, but this wasn't always the case. Conversations around marketing and profitability never went hand in hand, um, and I think probably in the last 
12 to 18 months, that's significantly changed. And, and I'm sure you're seeing it more than I am just speaking to all these brands, but that, that trend is probably increasing. Um, and there is no better lever when it comes to uh, marketing and profitability than affiliate. Uh, affiliate, I, I know in our discussion yesterday, we were saying like the beauty of affiliate is that you're not buying clicks, you're not buying, uh, you're not buying impressions, you're not buying content, you're, you're literally purchasing sales. Um, anything that's purely performance based, commission based, you're just, you know, offering a commission on generated sales. It's it's a no brainer. Um, and especially as you back into it and can really narrow it down to some of these affiliate opportunities are true top level new to brand sales with customers that would never have heard of your brand. Otherwise, it's like that, that's huge. Um, and, and in a world where e-com is so centered around this idea of profitability, there's probably no better marketing lever than when it comes to, to, uh, to affiliates. So we're definitely seeing that trend and um, really projecting it to, to increase to the conversations around uh, affiliate to, to increase and become more significant. I think there is also historically been a, a pretty big bubble around uh, influencers and creators. That's where, where creators were charging these massive upfront fees for content um, that's slowly getting popped. Um, you know, it, it's brands are kind of backing even like, influencer and creator conversations more into profitability and how does this actually impact my sales, not just brand awareness and, and getting the word out, um, which is important, but you know, again, it's, it's not always profitable. No, I agree. I think that's, I mean, we just did a, a full day event um, in, in New York city last week and that came up. We were you know, it was in the middle of a TikTok conversation and this idea around influencers as a whole and where the trend that's going is, they're at a point and people really needed content and they were producing content. And so there was almost this idea that we could, we can overpay them because of what we're getting out. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, when they're, when they're lining everything up, they're actually trying to do you know, like a return on investment of, Hey, we've poured this much money into an influencer and we don't have a clear line of sight as to actually the sales they drove. You can see blips here and there. But is that, you know, related to other marketing efforts, to new product launch or accelerating, you know, paid media on Amazon and, and Google? And so there isn't that direct correlation that could be made. And so part of that conversation just pulled out was like, we're seeing a slow decline in um, brands that are um, continually, continuously over investing on the influencer side and where they're capturing it then is this affiliate side where you literally know exactly how much you're paying out and you're only doing it upon conversion. <laughs> yeah. And I think that the other cool thing about, you know, when we speak to brands um, that are specifically focused on influencers, we make it very clear from the onset into, you know, what are your KPIs? If your KPIs are, are content um, and you do need content, because obviously content's important and that's, that's not changing anytime soon, whether it's for paid ads or even something as simple as Amazon listings, um, you know, or are you doing this as a revenue driver? And if you're doing this as a revenue driver, paying influencers up front might not be the best move. Um, it might be more effective to do you know, affiliate partnerships, commission-based partnerships. Um, the other thing ar around the content conversation that I think is really cool is content, generating content and the process of generating content is not what it was a year or two ago. Um, it's... With, there's no better way of like, it's just gotten cheaper. Um, there's more content creators out there. Um, it, I don't want to say the market's being saturated with content creators, but there's definitely the supply and demand aspect of how many creators there once was that would produce really good content um, has changed. Um, so, you know, even, even back in the, in the day, I remember you would, for, for a decent piece of content or a decent piece of UGC content, when all that was getting started would cost, 500 to a thousand dollars just for the content itself. And that wasn't so crazy, but I think, uh, and the conversations that we're seeing with brands today on the content side, again, this is not at all what we're a part of. Um, it seems to be significantly cheaper than that. Um, which is also, I think, uh, I think interesting. Yeah. I mean, the, the UGC side cost is coming down, um, the on brand side where you've got some legacy brands or really high end brands that care about, you know, or, uh, you know, it's in the CPG space. I was in OTC pharma. Everything has to go through regular regulatory. Everything's got to go through legal. Everything's got to be approved. And so we really have to button up the content and it's not, you just can't go with UGC. That side of content 
was getting super expensive because there's such a huge demand for it. Um, and it's just, it's not, it's not easy to do. Um, Interesting. the demand for that is going through the roof because they need it and they want it to be on brand and it's got to be able to be approved through all these different departments. And, uh, people don't want to do that. Like you said, there, there's a lot of people creating UGC, right? If you're a, a, just a normal brand that's off the shelf, maybe. Um, but when you need very, very clearly defined content over and over again, that, that side is getting super expensive. Um, Interesting. Yeah. Um, I, I did want to jump into a little bit about, um, so the, is there this trend then where me as a brand, where I can actually incentivize the publisher to put the products that I want that benefit them the most and then change, is it, is it my affiliate fee to the publisher? And is that like the huge difference where I can start influencing actually what's happening as opposed to hoping it just plays out? Oh, absolutely. I, I mean, it's, it's affiliate in general is, uh, is a two-sided role. It's a, it's a real partnership. Um, and it, it can be frustrating a lot of times on our end when we see like brands really trying almost too hard to have an influence on publisher's content. Um, but fundamentally, the, sh the short answer to your question is yes. Um, there is strategies that can be done and put in place by brands to uh, kind of drive interest from publishers to the brand as a whole or even to specific products. Um, fundamentally, from a brand's perspective, it is important to recognize, I always say, and this is my philosophy, it's probably a, a little contentious, but my, my philosophy is always you know, really lean into what a publisher wants. They know what works best for their audience. Um, publishers in general, a massive chunk of their revenue, sometimes majority, uh, most of the time, majority of their revenue at this point today, especially with the state of where uh, paid media and, and other revenue drivers have been affiliated is, is a big chunk of their revenue. Um, and, and they know the game. Um, they, they know what their audience wants to buy. They know what their editors want to publish. Um, and kind of the more options that you give a publisher from a brand perspective, the more products you have in a program, the more uh, commissions and incentives you have, the more promotions that you offer to a publisher, the, the better the chance and the odds of success are. Um, that being said, there, there are ways, I mean, point blank, trying to, you know, there, there are ways to influence, like, for example, specific products that a publisher focuses on in your catalog. So point blank, the, the number one way to do that is just, you have a base rate commission offer. And I'm, again, I'm speaking to Archer's network as a whole, how it works. Some networks don't let you set commission offers on a product level, but Archer's network actually, our network allows you to set commission offers on a product level. So if you wanted a publisher to really zone in and focus on a specific product, you would obviously set a base rate for your entire brand, what you want to offer your entire brand. And that would be lower from, from the rate on the products that you want the particular publisher to focus on. Um, so you would set a little bit of a higher rate, kind of pushing the publisher and incentivizing the publisher to focus on specific products. And there's other ways. I mean, a lot of times in product launches, some publishers are specifically interested in, in, in specific products that are being launched. Others want more established products. In the case of Amazon, which is what we're working with, it's products with a lot more reviews. Um, you know, there, there's, there's different situations. I think in general, our philosophy is, and we try to relay this to brands, let's offer as many opportunities and options for publishers as possible. Let's kind of let them do the content thing. They know their audience. Their business is making content that their audience wants. Um, let them decide what to promote. Let them decide how to promote it. And let's just give them the toolbox as to like, hey, we'll let us know when you need a specific promotion. Let us know how much to make that promotion and we'll make that for you. Um, let us know what dates you want these commission increases. We'll, we'll make that happen for you. Um, that's, that's where we've seen the most success. When you're... So if I'm a brand, right, and I'm jumping into this space as a whole, is there, what are the, you know, I'm brand listening in. Um, is there too small of a brand? Is there too big of a brand? And then what does onboarding, what is like, what are the inherent built-in costs um, that I'm going to incur? And then uh, the other question that we get to is uh, that, that begets the next question, which is, should everybody be doing this? Is this now just, you know, a table stakes um, line item for, for budgeting and for marketing? Good question. So I want to break the conversation kind of down into 
two things. Number one is general affiliate marketing. And number two is kind of more specialized into what we're doing and, and how we're changing the game a little bit here at Archer, which is affiliate marketing for Amazon in particular. Um, so affiliate marketing, let's, let's just start with general affiliate marketing. Uh, general affiliate marketing, um, on some level, I personally think that every brand should have it. It's a no-brainer. It's, it's fully commission-based. Um, you know, it's, it's, it, I'm not going to say it's all going to be top level, top, top of funnel sales. Um, there definitely is going to be some, you know, lower of funnel affiliates who are potentially targeting customers who might have purchased anyway, specifically when it comes to a lot of these uh, coupon and deal sites and Chrome extensions. Um, but there are strategies that can be implemented to ensure that those affiliates are at least earning pretty small commission commissions. They are important piece of the general affiliate funnel. But I think affiliate in general and having some strategy um, is probably maybe not the first thing like a super small brand should focus on, but as a brand increases and as a brand's reach grows, um, should definitely be some level of a priority. I think as you move up the chain and as you move to, to larger and larger brands, it does become more of an opportunity. Uh, as a, the, the bigger brands already have some element of brand awareness that publishers need. Um, in order for a publisher or an affiliate to earn a commission, they need a cu- consumer to purchase then and now. Um, they need to drive an immediate purchase. So from a publisher's perspective, they're always going to gravitate towards publishing products, which have more credibility, which are much more widely known. And the, like I mentioned before, in the case of Amazon, having more reviews. Um, so kind of as your brand becomes more and more you know, mature and, and the awareness grows, uh, more and more publishers are going to be interested in the opportunity is just going to, it's going to grow for you to a point where some of the larger brands are not even dealing with a whole lot of outbound, meaning reaching out to publishers and pitching them. It's more inbound publishers coming to them and saying, hey, we want to promote you guys. Can we work on some sort of agreement? Um, now, in the case of uh, Amazon, the aff- am- affiliate opportunity on Amazon, which is kind of what we specialize in, um, so Archer as a network is a really unique affiliate network. Our platform is built um, for growth. Right now, we're, we're on a mission to really work with as many Amazon sellers as possible and get them included in our network so we can go back to publishers and say, um, publishers, join our network because we have a crazy amount of Amazon sellers and Amazon brands in our network. We're, we're, our network is really, really new, really young, and really focused on growth, and we're going really quick. We have over 3,000 Amazon sellers already connected. Um, but the, the point I'm trying to make is the key value add that we have in our network is we are fully performance-based. What that means is we have no upfront fees, no monthly fees. Everything is fully commission-based. The process of, of how we work is we connect to an Amazon advertising account, whether it's a seller account or a vendor account. Um, we track all generated sales from our network of publishers, which can be anyone from micro-influencer all the way up to some of the largest mass media uh, publishers in the US, CNN, BuzzFeed, Forbes. Uh, And they promote Amazon products with Amazon attribution links. Um, Hmm. So all the sales are tracked. In the case of seller accounts, it's actually eligible for the brand referral bonus, which means Amazon is paying these sellers a commission back on generated sales, which is insane. Um, And really comes with no upfront risk from a financial perspective, at least, for sellers to join our network and sign up. So again, biased answer, but... From the Amazon selling perspective, I truly think it's it's a no brainer. No matter even if you're you know a, a small seller with one ASIN that you just launched, or you know some of the larger companies we're working with, um, which are household names like Roku or you know different, different Allo Yoga, some some pretty large companies. Uh, it's a no brainer to to be in the Archer network. Um, you know we're rapidly expanding, and and most importantly. The uh, the opportunity for to increase top level sales is massive. I mean, PPC and, and other avenues are becoming more and more expensive, and unlocking a sales channel that has no risk with tremendous upside is what it's a no brainer. Yeah, do you? Um, is there a difference if you're your um, vendor or seller central one P or three P? Um, fundamentally, no. There is a pretty big incentive that I kind of touched on this a second ago for sellers, three uh, P uh, sellers, in that. All the sales that we generate are through what's called Amazon attribution links. So Amazon attribution is a tool which allows sellers to track, sellers and vendors. It's available. It's through Amazon advertising. So as long as you're brand registered, you have access to this tool. And it allows um, sellers and vendors to track external traffic coming to their Amazon product detail pages with UTM links. So if you're running an email newsletter, if you're running paid traffic on Google, Meta, whatever it may be, 
you have the capability of creating this attribution link, sending the traffic through this link with the UTM tag, and actually tracking how many clicks are coming through those links, how many purchases are coming through those links, all that. It's a pretty new piece of, of uh, advertising technology that Amazon released to sellers. And it's, it's massive because the growth opportunity on Amazon kind of becomes infinite, not just you know, targeted at customers who are coming onto the Amazon app or searching for, for products on, the, on Amazon. Uh, you can start targeting anyone across the internet. So our network leans on this piece of technology on Amazon attribution. There is a huge advantage for 3P sellers in that Amazon actually, this is fascinating, Amazon encourages sellers to invest and direct off Amazon traffic to Amazon in the form of actually paying out a commission on any generated sales. Uh, they pay that commission out in the form of a referral fee reduction on future orders. Uh, and the commission is massive. So I don't, a lot of sellers we speak to don't even realize what's going on. But uh, sellers are getting paid an average of 10% back on generated Amazon attribution sales. So if you're driving sales from an email list, from a network like ours, you're driving $100,000 of sales monthly, that's $10,000 right back in your pocket, um, which is massive and, and kind of a big reason why we're seeing really aggressive commission offers from some of the sellers that are in our network. We've paid publishers an average of 18.5% on generated Amazon sales. Um, because sellers are just able to be really aggressive with their commissions. They're, they're making decisions as to, hey, I'm offering, I'm selling my products through PPC at a 20% ACOS, 15% ACOS. I'm getting 10% back from Amazon here. I can easily offer a 25% commission in Archer's network, be more profitable than I am through PPC. It's totally new to brand sales. It's, it's truly a, a big opportunity for 3P sellers specifically. Yeah. If, how many people are using it though? So you just really? grab it, you use the link, and then in all your marketing, you're driving it, you get a kickback. How many it's people insane. are using this? Not enough. Um, I would say out of the sellers we're spe speaking to, just anecdotal data from, from my conversations with sellers, I would, I would assume probably one out of every three to four sellers don't even know what Amazon attribution, that Amazon attribution exists. Um, and there's probably even a, a larger... Uh, group of people that know it exists, but don't realize its significance and don't use it at all. Uh, it's it's fascinating to me. It's honestly kind of frustrating almost. But I mean, in your conversations, Aaron, I encourage you to just inform people, uh, forget Archer, just inform people that Amazon attribution exists. It's it's huge. Yeah. I mean, I mean, there is a balance between what people want to drive to the direct consumer site and what they want to drive to Amazon. But the the other side of the driving traffic to Amazon is if it is off Amazon traffic, then the organic search algorithm really favors those products that are getting a lot of offsite traffic. Yes. So as, as brands are like weighing, do I drive to a direct consumer site or do I, you know, so I can actually own the customer uh, or do I drive it to Amazon? I mean, Amazon's putting a lot of incentives to have you actually take that paid media and drive it to Amazon. Right. And yeah. I think there, there's a few elements of conversation. So you're spot on. It's always going to be the, the the balance of the, you know, you're going to have to go back and forth. Do you want to own this customer, have their data, have their contact information? You can target them for, for purchases down the road, which is important. Or do you get this 10% back from Amazon, incre you know, increase the whole flywheel of ranking organically, which is um, driving off Amazon traffic to Amazon, like you said, spot on, plays a huge, has a huge impact on. And the other thing that, that is really important to consider from a brand perspective is conversion on Amazon is insanely higher in almost every case outside of, there's a few categories that I would say conversion on DTC is probably a little bit better. Um, but, but outside of those cases, uh, conversion on Amazon is almost always going to be higher. Customers love free two-day shipping. They trust Amazon. There's a massive amount of credibility. They love the two-day returns. Checkout is super simple. There's nothing they have to think about. It's two clicks and they, they have the product ordered. Um, I mean, we, we, we've we A-B tested with deal sites, I could tell you, uh, conversion rates driving the same exact product with the same exact deal, D to C to Amazon. It was a difference of, you're ready for this, 3% conversion rate. And obviously, this is going to vary by price point. There's always going to be uh, different different data. But on, in this particular case where we tested it, uh, we had a, a, a supplement product that we sent the traffic to D to C. It had a 3% conversion rate on the deal. The same exact website we posted at the Amazon link with the same exact deal, and we saw a fifteen percent conversion rate. It was a really <laughs> good deal. So, I mean, it, it's it's almost always going to be a no. My again, very biased opinion. It's almost always going to be a no brainer to send it to Amazon. 
um, just simply because of conversion rate, not even factoring in these other elements of Amazon paying that commission, the flywheel effect of increased organic ranking. It's customers love Amazon. Yeah, I, mean, I do. I mean, on the vendor side, I did not care for them at all, right? Uh, <laughs> but as a customer, uh, they had the product I wanted, they delivered it in the time frame I expected, and they had the best price around. I mean, as a consumer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you, you, you can't beat it. Yeah. Um, I've been picking your brain for a while. Like any, any questions for me? Yeah. Uh, I, I would love, uh, Aaron. I mean, one of the coolest people I know in a sense that you get to speak to so many sellers. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of jealous of that. So, I mean, outside of, of affiliate, what, what have you seen? Um, where, where are you seeing e-commerce going? Where, where are you seeing the trends going? And I guess, um, for, for, uh, on the service provider side, I mean, I'm, I'm mostly on the service provider side dealing with sellers. Where, where are you seeing any top level trends there and speaking to other, uh, similar service providers? Yeah, I would say, um, it, uh, I will stick, we'll divide into two, right. The, the brand side and the service provider side, and they kind of blend. Um, but what's really interesting right now is we've really started to see machine learning and AI, um, like actual products and services that work. Uh, it's it's no longer um, the mechanical Turk where, you know, these companies said they had AI and machine learning, but it was really, you know, them taking your data at the end of the day, you know, hands on keyboards all night overseas, and then it coming back with an answer in the morning by the time you got up, like, oh, look, it works. You know, and those are really expensive. Um, and we've started to see on both the Amazon and the direct consumer, you know, side and those platforms that pop up that now they're $500, $1,000, $2,000 a month, rather than six, twelve, eighteen thousand dollars $18,000 a month. And it's because you're not actually paying for people anymore. Um, you're, you're paying for the product to do what they promised it would do. Because again, getting back to the profitability, um, piece is brands are struggling with it. And so. It's an interesting time because I'm seeing a lot of like direct consumer sites, um, you know, consider the the option of just shutting down uh, because those costs are so high to have your whole tech stack on the back end. I kind of encourage them like, you know, if you're a, if you can get a market basket above 40 bucks, then don't for sure don't shut it off. But if you're at like a everyday item, that's like eight or nine bucks. Like, I don't know if it's worth having it around. Um, unless it's small enough, you can ship it in, a, in an envelope, I guess it's not a big deal. But again, that gets back to the profitability piece. So brands are looking at that. The The other interesting thing from the brand side is um, this blending of um, direct consumer and Amazon. Oh, and fascinating. that is happening at a faster pace than e-com and retail. Because um, there's a huge push that everybody wants to get back on store shelf. Um, they want to ship full cases, LTL, full truck load to a Walmart or Target or a Walgreens or a Meyer, right? It, it, it get one shipping cost really low based on, you know, a per item cost and then have them handle all the business. Uh, so the Amazon direct to consumer piece, and a lot of this is driven, uh, I think, by the advancements in the new releases within the Amazon marketing cloud. Um, and Amazon, as we talked about, its desire to get off Amazon traffic onto Amazon. Um, what you're able to do with the marketing cloud now, uh, and a key metric they just released was new to brand ROAS, um, you're able to track incrementality pretty well. You're not just hoping your, you know, your agency or your rep is gonna give you a halo effect that you can't really tell. You actually can see it and yeah. how many new people you're driving. And with that, you can also just put a pixel on your site, grab your ideal customer, basically pull it into the marketing cloud. They can dedupe them out, right? It's a clean room, but you can then make from, I mean, I, I think most people would agree that the people that go to your, to your direct consumer site to buy are your purest form of brand advocates, right? Like they're going there to buy it because they love you and the experience you provide and they want it right from you. They don't want to deal with Amazon. Well, if you could, which you can now, you can take that customer profile, pull it in the marketing cloud, and then you can use that to power your PPC and DSP campaigns um, to, to retarget an exact lookalike 
And so what you're able to do is get really smart with your budget, right? It's you've even trimmed down even more. We're not just talking like, oh, well, I want to hit this part of the country at this time of day at only this type of shopper. You're literally saying these are my exact shoppers, hit them wherever they're at, whenever they're most likely to buy. And you can get very, very smart yeah. uh, with I think- your advertising. And then w- one one more thing to add in there is you could also use that to drive it back to your direct consumer site. You no longer have to drive it to Amazon. Well, we've heard of all the benefits of doing it, which has a lot of brands doing it, but then Amazon's just just continuing to gobble up the paid media budgets. Um, it's incredible. And that's like the interesting thing that I've seen. It's no longer DTC versus Amazon. It's like everybody's realizing, wait, if I, it's, you know, it's the one plus one, you know, equals It's three. like one big funnel. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. fascinating. Yeah, I, I, on the topic of funnels, I think that's that's the coolest thing about AMC is um, obviously back to the profitability thing. Just the first thing you need for for profitability is obviously attribution and and uh, data. And I think the coolest thing that AMC has done is for the first time you can see a proper sales funnel as to like, all right, we're spending all this marketing and it's showing me sales and whatnot. But what does this look like in a single customer journey. Like what are all those touch points and how is this backing into sale um, and to profitability? And then to layer in what your point of like layering in D to C to that, I think is is really cool. And it just becomes this one long journey, customer journey that leads to a purchase and can be uh and and ultimately can be uh profitable at some point. Yeah. I mean, and so that kind of leads into the next side, the service provider side. Um, if you are a legacy tech service provider that is primarily powered by hands-on keyboards and charging over 10K a month for just an entry level, it's going to be a rough go of it as people trim it out because um, the partners that are popping up, like the, the marketing cloud, I mean, I had um, Kashif on um, so far. He was at Media Monks uh, before that Orca Pacific. He's now at XMars. And they basically have a simple plug-in to the marketing cloud so any brand can own their own D, um, AMC instance and see everything. It's not just your agency own, owning it anymore. It's not you having a field of data scientists that are writing Amazon SQL, Amazon ask SQL queries. You just hit a button and get path to purchase. And so it's the yeah. democratization of that data at a brand level for a couple grand a month. Like you could never get that before. You'd spend more than that just on the data scientist you had or the, the, the programmer that's trying to extract the data. If it, if Amazon was even willing to give you like before the new to brand ROAS. Um, and so those people, people exactly like you, which is basically like, like, you don't even pay, like brands don't pay Archer affiliates really anything, right? You'll, based on how much the publisher is making, you get a cut of that. Brands are paying you nothing. You're easy to onboard. It's no additional cost. And you can directly attribute scales, sales on a performance basis. It's a no-brainer, right? <laughs> like, and so it's these ideas of this, these new um, service providers, um, this new tech that's popping up that's empowering brands at a low or no-cost scenario because they can monetize it a different way. Like the, those are those are the winners right there. And it's I don't know. It's a fun time for a brand if you can make it through this, you know, Q4 <laughs> and start off in 2025. There's going to be this whole new, like, range of um, service providers, options, tech that are going to allow you to run a very, very profitable business. Um, yeah, we're fun. we're we're definitely excited to uh, to be a part of that. I think it's uh, like I like we started this, and I, I think this conversation has come full circle just to kind of bring out that that first point, which is profitability is the thing and that's that's only increasing. Um and and anything that can get there or help brands get there is we think gonna be a winner on, on all fronts. <laughs> well I mean you came from the brand side, right? Like you saw and you built exactly what you needed from the brand side of things, which is what I love. Like I don't want to pay a ton for this platform or that platform. I literally only want to pay for this as a brand perspective. So you build a platform that allows brands to do it. I love it. I totally love it. Um, what What are you most excited about? 
Um, ooh, um, I think what we're, the, the the space. I think um, the Amazon affiliate space is still um, a little bit of a black box. I think we're selfishly well positioned in terms of we just have a really good understanding of what's going on and what the opportunity is. Um, to be candid, we've done a really bad job at educating the market in the past year and a half. Um, but I think that's changing. I think we're, we're, uh, we, we actually recently hired like the head of content, um, someone to really just like, like our real focus for the next two quarters. And we're, and we're already, it's been the focus for the last two months or so. And we're already seeing the, the change here, um, which is we want to just drive education in the Amazon space, like sellers speaking to Amazon sellers, to be really even speaking to standard retailers and in, in, in D2C spaces, but for sure, Amazon sellers, they don't know what affiliate is. And if they do, they don't know the significance and the potential impact that it has. Um, and for sure, Amazon sellers don't know. We spoke to off the record. We had a meeting last week with someone from the ex, uh, an ex-Amazonian from the affiliate team. He estimated that 20%, close to 20% of all Amazon revenue is coming from external traffic, let's just call it. So it's the Amazon search team, Amazon affiliate team, um, all these kind of levers, which is insane. Um, and sellers are not yeah. investing in that. that that's, that's obscene. Like They're investing all these massive budgets in PPC and on Amazon traffic and targeting a customer on Amazon, which is great. It's majority of Amazon sales, but that's became expensive. That's became competitive. And um, we have this, there, there's really cool opportunities for sellers to start focusing more holistically on Amazon and driving, you know, unlocking these, these massive pockets of traffic. Uh, and for us, I'm just excited on um, really bringing this, just the education aspect to sellers. Like I mentioned, we, we've done a bad job at that. We were, I think as a company, very focused on, on like just sales and signing new sellers and whatnot. And we've kind of taken a step back and said, all right, let's slow down here. Let's just really focus on driving home what the opportunity is, educate the space, and I think we're we're just now starting to catch our cadence with that. Yeah, because people don't know. And exactly. And I and I under, I understand because right, they um early, you know, for the past four years, it's been this this mass scramble and affiliates wasn't the main focus. And so people really went all in on Amazon, Amazon advertising, content generation, even the influencer side of things. Um, the uh, performance marketing, Google, SEO, they, there was this massive, and it was like affiliates was sitting off to the side, just waiting for its time. Yeah. Right? It's waiting and, and it, the, we're there, we're there where it's performance based. It's, it's actually quite easy to do. There's huge benefits, but people are just now starting to say, oh, wait a minute. It's not just something I, I outsource to an agency and I hope it just works. It's like, I need to learn this space. I need to get educated in the space. I have to understand it because it can be a major revenue driver across the board. And every penny I spend can be justified. Every single one is justified. That's the key. That's it the key. Came from a sale. So it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I'm pumped. I mean, I, I think what you build is awesome. Um, especially that it came from the brand side that it's not, you know, just like this, Oh, I think it might be nice. It's literally building exactly what brands need. Uh, I'm pumped for you guys and I'm super excited. Um, for, I don't know, the next few years, you guys are going to be, you guys are going to be on a fun ride, a really fun <laughs> ride. I sure hope so. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, I think it's just a, a cool spot to end it, my friend. Um, you know, thanks so much for being such great friend, partner, uh, supporter of the network and, and brands in it. Again, uh, David Katz from Archer Affiliates. Uh, I'd ping him on uh, LinkedIn, uh, hit their website, schedule some time. Uh, this is something that I would say, you know, almost every brand needs to be uh, at least investigating, uh, taking a look at and then executing if if the time and everything else and um, is right. because. If you're not doing this, I think this is going to be a table stakes part of anybody's uh, media budget going forward. So anyways, great, my friend. Well, thanks for your time today. Aaron, thank you. Always a pleasure, my man. Absolutely. I feel well, like all our, all our conversations fly by. I know. It doesn't right? even feel like an hour. I know. Uh, well, with that, we're going to wrap up this episode of the Digital Deep Dive. Thanks, everybody, for listening in. Thanks, my friend. Later. Later.